Okay, I'm going to try and explain this a bit better. The moot stepper is a polyrhythmic sequencer which is styled after the M185, which was a hardware sequencer, uh, which has been replicated in software, and also uh, the Intelligel Metropolis is a replication of the original M185. And what they allowed you to do was to set up things like the note going across and uh, then the main part about it was they allowed you to set a gate mode and uh, a gate number so you could have um, as it went across you could have it going it's, instead of just playing middle C it would play middle C middle C middle C like three times and then the next time you could have uh, it playing A and you could have it playing uh, four times and then playing three times and you could also change the gate mode so there'd be a simple repeat like ba 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 or you could have a long note ba ha 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 or you could have a long rest which would be a length a length a period of silence the length of uh you know the four beats or however many beats you'd selected and um you know you'd have it going across and you could make some quite complex things uh selecting all the stuff and i basically have recreated it except you can change the length of each line so you can have notes you can just have say two notes we've just selected two notes now number one which is C and number five like that so then velocity you can have let's say three steps for velocity uh, first one 127 next one to be 50 and then next one to be 95 like that now, ignoring everything else, what's going to happen is uh, the notes are going to go across, bam, bam, and then it's going to go back to the beginning, bam, 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 like that. But the velocity is also going to loop around, and it's going to go one, two, three different values, and then loop around. So because you've got different lengths for each of these lines, um, different notes are going to receive different velocities each time, and you build up these quite complex patterns. So. Um, the more variables you add, I mean, we've got notes, velocity, gate number, gate mode, octave, and a new thing today, program, which allows you to select the MIDI program, um, which selects an instrument if you're using the Microsoft Wavetable. Oh dear, I've crashed the program. That's no good. Stop it and run it again. Oh dear, yeah, changing the um, changing the output is currently a bit buggy. Um, change it into something it won't crash if you change it before you've actually started playing I don't think or maybe it will um, anyway the what the hell was I talking about anyway yeah, I had it set up and now I haven't got it set up anymore uh, okay let's have three notes uh, no two notes one five like that and velocity we're gonna have three things again and um, whatever it was I can't remember 50, 127, 90, whatever, just a bit of variation there. Um, so we can build up quite complex patterns with these things going around. Let's now change oh, the program. I just added the program and um, it does different things. It can select the, um, the instrument in Microsoft Wavetable Synthesis or, for example, in when you're using the loopback device and sending it to FL Studio it can select uh, which of the instruments loaded into FL Studio playing and at the moment loaded into FL Studio we have a kick, a snare and a closed hi-hat and FM8 so we can select between those with 0 to 3 so let's take the program number of steps down to 5 it's good to get different lengths for everything um, and not always just 4 or an 8 and stuff, make it so that things don't line up properly to get things being more interesting uh, program five uh, five steps per program um, so zero is going to be kick so at the moment it's going to be kick let's play that okay now uh, one is going to be snare Yeah, there. Um, hi hat on two, on two. Hmm, 
let's mess with the octave octave down to four steps four four no it's a five six seven steps four four five 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 three four four five six unfortunate because we don't really want the uh, octave and uh, note value to mess with the percussion sounds but they will because they do because they affect everything but now we're going to add into the program say three more steps to take us up to eight and for these we're going to set them to three which corresponds in FL Studio because I've loaded that to FM8 the FM synthesis synth um so now we'll be able to hear the notes and octave changes a lot more easily if they correspond to this fm synth <laughs> now it's up the speed a bit to make it a little bit more interesting let's change the um, gate number going across we're gonna have one four one no one four two three uh, one one five six two so um, steps number of steps nine now gate mode gate mode gate mode gonna have this all changed up um long rest i don't i'm not a big fan of that too much silence in the pattern i uh, have um, a long note repeated note repeated note long note note and rests long note repeated note seven steps for gate mode let's try that Speed up, maybe. Tempo down. Let's add a couple more notes. Um, three, four. Five, six, seven, nine, eight, nine, ten, eleven notes. One, five, one, one. It's still just seven notes from C, so it's not going to sound very different. One, five, one, three, one, no, one, five, one, three, two, seven, and four. What the? I don't know. Just type anything. Two, three, one, two, one, five. Try that. We need a bit more tempo, I think. Because the thing is, we're not actually playing the percussion at the same time as the notes, the lead notes, so we have to get through them a bit quicker. So... I do like the way that sometimes you get uh, quiet percussion notes repeated, you know, a lot of times, like say six times. It sounds like some kind of weird reverb or delay going on. 
So let's see what I want to add to this moop step sequencer. Um, Portamento is one thing I want to add, if that's quite easy to do, I'm not sure if it is yet. I think there's a MIDI CC you can send for Portamento length. I'm not sure if that will automatically do things or if I have to actually send a sort of uh, pitch range for it to slide over. I haven't looked into that yet. Um, I want to add tempo and divider, which I've actually got in the program already. I want to add those actually as um, variable lines, so you can actually change the tempo and the beat divider over the course of the piece. Um, I'm not sure if that might cause the program to stutter rather a lot if it's changing the tempo so often because it uses a, a sort of a default timer control uh, in Windows forms. So that might go a bit wrong. Um, blah, 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 what else? Oh, length of note I want to add. This will sort of add a sort of limited polyphony to everything by enabling you to set the length of a note longer than the length of a beat. So it will sort of play a note, it will hold that note while it goes on and plays other notes. That could be interesting. Um, uh, advanced by gate or advanced by step. Now see at the moment when you play this when it gets to something like uh, gate mode of 2 which is multi note and a gate count of say 6 if it plays a note it's going to look at the notes and it's going to go okay we're going to play repeat note and the note is 5 and so we're going to play this particular note um, however many times, say 6 times, we're going to go do 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 like that, well not like that, like a do 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 in a more regular way um, it'll play that and the note will stay the same but what I had in mind was a, a way to change between gate advance and note advance. If you had gate advance on the note for example then when it sort of says okay we're going to play six we've got gate number of six and a gate mode of two and if you've got advanced by gate then the notes are going to change each gate position so you've got six gate repeats it will actually use up you know it'll go through this faster it'll go one two three four five six actually play different notes for each of those six, you know, gate beats, as it were. Um, whereas if you get set to advance by beat, then it will just, you know, it'll just play one note repeated because it's not going to advance through the notes. It's going to advance through the notes only once per you know, beat, which is, you know, where you change the gate number and the gate mode. That might get a bit confusing if you can change the actual advance by gate for you know, the gate mode and stuff, Ooh, it might get a bit confusing. Um, that's pretty much it for things I can add, I think, without getting too weird. Um, I wanted to try maybe sort of ripping out the whole set of controls here under gate display and making that so it's a modular thing so you can sort of have as many as you like. And provided you're sending the MIDI out to an instrument that can handle the polyphony, then um, you can have lots of sequences running at the same time. And you know that could be really interesting. I mean, at the moment you can you can sort of cheat and you can make polyphonic tracks by recording, setting this to use the loopback control, sending it into FL Studio, hitting record in FL Studio, and recording the MIDI that comes in. And then once you've got it recorded record on top of it again by changing all this and then sending some more stuff in. So you could actually just use percussion sounds and keep them the same note and octave so they don't stand a bit weird and then you could record that and then you could uh, change it and do a more melodic pattern and then you could record that into FL Studio. It does seem to sort of um, veer a little bit away from what the program is supposed to be there which is just you know, it's supposed to be self-contained. Everything you do in the program is—it's all contained here. That you can do it. It's not supposed to be a thing where you can, where you have to overdub and cut things around and sync them up in order to get it to work. Um, so, I don't know. It's not really something I'm that serious about. Although, having said that, there's um, the commercial M185 demo. If we just run that now, we should be able to put this into the stream maybe oh it takes an 
uh, an age to start up this. I don't know why it's probably checking the uh, DRM or something to make sure you've bought it. But I've actually got the trial version. Um, this is a software version of the M185 uh, sequencer, and it's a software version of the hardware. And it costs, I think it's something like $40 to get off the trial version and um, getting off the trial version enables you to save uh, setup so you basically you can set up all the um, variables the way you like them and then you can save that as a snapshot and you can press little buttons to change between them which is good for a sort of live performance um, the other thing is it will enable you to run it for longer than 30 minutes which you can't do with the demo and it's still thinking about it. It's not my computer being slow. I assure you, everything else starts up a lot faster than this. Um, anyway, the fact is, I I, there aren't too many polyrhythmic sequences out there. There's some free stuff available for Max for Live, which um, is interesting. Um, but basically, that's just a sequencer. It doesn't enable you to change things like the the gate mode and the gate steps like the M185 does. It's still not loaded. I should have laid it before the stream, shouldn't I? I really didn't think it took this long. Anyway, so um, there really isn't something out there which exactly duplicates what I've done. In fact, nothing, nothing even commercial as far as I know. So, you know, it's possible if I polished it up enough, I could actually, you know, sell it. And maybe people would like it, but then I wouldn't like the responsibility. Of, you know, it could crash, could wipe people's files out, take over their lives and okay it's loaded now so what we're going to do is add a source screen capture there it goes right okay here's the m185 they have got eight steps going across uh, and obviously it's not polyrhythmic so uh, everything you select is just selected for that step so let's switch this to I think the output, it's got an internal, it's an internal um, thing and I think it's a, my interface with the Microsoft uh, wavetable, I'm not sure. Press the, you can see it going across there. Their length of a note is much more a blip, it's um, on mine, it's, you know, the note doesn't come off until the next one is just about to come on. And we can change the note with this. Okay, now what we'll do now is we'll um, change this, which is, this corresponds to my uh, gate number. So we'll change gate number two, gate number four, gate number six, gate number four, gate number eight, gate one, one, two. Now let's play that. Now you can hear with their um, their default setting for the, the gate mode. See this this is the gate. This corresponds to my gate number. This is their gate mode. Um, there's the the long rest. There's the long note. There's multi note. There is um, note plus rests, which I've got. And also they've got a thing which I haven't got yet, which is trill. You can set this and you can put it on trill. So let's play this with a trill. It will actually play triplets now for that position in the sequence. And it sounds awful. Let's set the number of stages to four. Come on. We see what we can see about this is they've got the um, they've got the thing where it's always the same. So these four steps, you play it. And it's always going to be the same. I mean, you can you can switch it up by basically, you know, using it as a performance tool and as it's going across, you change the number of steps and um you can change the notes and you, you can change everything and you know, it can sound pretty much like what I'm doing except I'm achieving 
the the dynamics by you know allowing this mismatch between the number of steps for the gate mode and for the note and for the, the gate count, the gate mode, the note, the octave, all these kind of things. And so that different notes get different velocities, different notes get different gate modes, different gate repeats. So whereas with theirs it just goes across one, two, three, four, and then it will play the exact same thing again if you don't touch it. Uh, mine will actually change. And so mine's almost like an auto fiddler. You can play this and you can fiddle with it. And you can change how it goes. And with mine, it's like it fiddles with itself. So you don't have to fiddle with it. So that's quite um, interesting. It would be nice in mine to have a, a load and save preset thing like they've got here. Uh, not in the demo, but there you go. $40 was just too much, really, when I thought that I could make it myself. So I made it myself. There you go. Thanks very much for watching. That's the end of this broadcast.